while other car makers suffered from an identity crisis, Subaru just keeps playing the same tune repeatedly, and without fail, customers keep jamming. Save one issue, when the record skips parents. See, Subaru hasn't had a three-row rig since the Tribeca ended sales in 2014. So the brand went back to its roots and did what it rocks at already, making eminently practical, easy to drive, reasonably fuel-efficient, AWD machines. Here are four reasons why you'll want to consider the new 2019 Subaru Ascent SUV. 1. It's a legit off-roader. Subaru DNA means all-wheel drive. Like Audi's cred in the space at the higher end, Subaru makes four wheels churning a core default. So there's no Ascent sold without it. Ditto, reasonable ground clearance, with the Ascent's 8.7 inches besting the Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, Ford Explorer, and Hyundai Santa Fe. Subaru also offers something it calls X-Mode that bakes in more allowable wheel slip and traction and stability control. This allows tires to spin until they bite. Deadens the throttle to ease modulation when you're rock crawling. And includes hill descent control that automatically brakes for steep inclines. We didn't get a ton of testing time for all of this, but the ground clearance and AWD alone will get you pretty far as long as you're comfortable driving in dirt or snow. And Subaru actually roof-rated the factory roof rails for car top tents, a first in the segment, and a legitimate acknowledgement from Subaru that this is a very common use for its customers. It offers trailering up to 5,000 pounds. Subaru spokesfolks say that most Subaru customers don't want to tow boats or personal watercraft they want to tow campers. And now there's the right rig just for that. 2. It's massive inside. The seven-passenger Hyundai Santa Fe boasts what seems like a very capacious 80 cubic feet of cargo space. But the Ascent smokes that, with 86.5 cubes and slays the Highlander. Pilot, Explorer Nissan Pathfinder, Mazda CX-9. A more legit measure, cargo behind the second row, so you can still cart a pair of groms and all your family gear, is 47.5 cubes, also besting the Santa Fe as well as all the aforementioned rivals. And Subaru's been insanely clever about packaging the interior too. Not only are there an astonishing 19 cup holders, Using high-strength steel enabled them to make the Ascent stiff enough that they could cut a wider opening rear hatch. Yes, you could technically do that with any crossover, and then you'd throw it through a corner and it would flex so much that it would handle poorly. You need stiffness to enable a huge hatch, and, to beat a dead horse, here too they bested all rivals. Further, rear passenger doors open wider, making it easier to load a child seat, and the door cutouts there, as with hatch opening, is also wider, making exiting from the third row easier. Note that you can order yours with either second row captain's chairs, meaning, no center seat, or a bench. That former configuration fits 7. The latter seats 8. And either way, Subaru doesn't charge extra. 3. Good Tech the Ascent starts at $31,995, and that trim level includes both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning you can keep your eyes on the road rather than your phone. There's also Subaru's EyeSight tech that includes automatic emergency braking and adaptive cruise control and standard lane keeping. The latter two work pretty well during tests which is important because the technology could help keep you safer when you're driving with a carload full of kids. Stock tech also includes three-zone climate control and brake hold, which keeps the car stopped once you've halted the vehicle at a light or in traffic, so you can take your foot off the brake in stop and go traffic. Higher level models also offer a digital rear view mirror, which uses the backup camera to show you the cars behind you, 
an ideal setup for when you cram the ascent with kids and gear on that family camping excursion and otherwise wouldn't be able to see rearward. 4. It drives like a Subaru. It might sound like damning with faint praise, but the best thing we can say about the ascent is that it feels a lot smaller than it actually is. During testing on Serpentine, woodsy roads on the Oregon coast, it felt like a five-passenger sedan rather than an eight-passenger family barge. Steering is hardly sports car tight, but it's accurate with inputs, with little of the numbness that plagues too many crossovers in this segment. And although the all-new 2.4-liter Boxer four-cylinder only makes 260 horsepower, it makes all of its 277 pounds FT of torque at just 2,000 RPMs, so it's quick off the line and also quick for passing. Subaru even showed how 45-65 mph passing while towing a 5,000-pound trailer bested all but the Toyota Highlander. Not that the target buyer likely tows that much with regularity, but it shows Subaru did its homework to make sure its smaller four-cylinder engine wouldn't be outclassed when you do take that family vacation. And speaking of that, 22 combined MPG and 500 miles of range per fill-up is dang reasonable for a family rig of this size. And, that matches our best solidly competition as Subaru seems to have done by every single metric we can think of for this pretty damn great new ascent. Your eyes are not deceiving you, that is indeed a real, honest-to-goodness Nissan Leaf convertible. Nissan built it to celebrate having sold 100,000 Leafs in Japan. We're almost surprised it took this long to sell 100,000 examples of the Leaf in Japan, since the US hit that mark a couple of years ago. The Leaf has enjoyed more than 320,000 sales worldwide. The fascinating thing here is the open-air Leaf itself. Nissan didn't provide much information on it. It's called the Leaf Open Car. We also see that it has lost its rear doors in the convertible conversion process. There still appear to be rear seats, though. It looks like the whole rear hatch is intact, as well, since it's attached to a piece of roof that was retained. Nissan didn't say whether there's a removable top for it, but we're leaning toward no, since this is mainly a show car, and calling it open car and not convertible seems to indicate this does not have a closed setting. One thing Nissan did make clear is that this is not going to be a production model. So you won't be seeing one at your local Nissan dealer anytime soon. But we suppose that if you really, really wanted a convertible Leaf, there are alternatives. For instance, there's that company that turned an F-150 into a convertible. We're sure they wouldn't have any qualms about cutting into whatever car you brought to their door. Subaru of America plans a plug-in hybrid version of the hot-selling Crosstrek subcompact crossover. Subaru said Friday the 2019 Crosstrek hybrid will be the automaker's first plug-in hybrid. The company's global platform that underpins the Crosstrek was designed and engineered to accommodate a plug-in hybrid. The platform's flexible design allows for gasoline, hybrid plug-in hybrid and all-electric Tro veterans. The Crosstrek was redesigned for the 2018 model year on the Subaru Global Platform. Subaru said in a statement, the plug-in hybrid can be driven as a normal hybrid, using both gasoline and electric power or just in pure electric drive. The Crosstrek Hybrid will feature partner Toyota Motor Corporation's hybrid system combined with Subaru's four-cylinder, direct injection boxer engine, all-wheel drive and an all-new transmission. In February, Subaru Chief Technology Officer Takeshi Takamori told Automotive News that the automaker would be drawing heavily from partnerships to engineer the plug-in hybrid. He said, for our plug-in hybrid to be introduced this year, we have used Toyota's technologies as much as possible. 
Subaru noted, the plug-in variant will also have unique styling, and is set to arrive at dealers at the end of the year, Subaru said. U.S. sales of the Crosstrack, the top-selling vehicle in the subcompact crossover segment, rose 67% to 45,728 Crosstracks this year through April. Pricing of the 2019 Crosstrack Hybrid will be released later.